Hello everybody, today I'm going to be doing a book review, I think I'm going to start doing a few more of these, I'm going to be doing the story of Edgar Sortel by David um, Rob Rob Robluski. This is a great book, one of my favourites. Um, it's not too hard to read, you can see the text is fairly large, well, at least, yeah, I mean, I'd consider it fairly large, reasonably spaced, it's, it is long, it's like 608 pages, but it's really good, so there's going to be a lot of spoilers. The, um, book is, I just got some facts here, the book is, it's a retelling of, of Hamlet, set in Wisconsin, America. Not exactly sure where, when the date is. It was published in 2008. Um, it's really good. So, I think what I'll do is I'll just sort of go through the, oh, I just see some weeds, let me get these real quick. Got him. Um, so from here, guys, I um I pretty much do a plot summary. You can skip to the time that I'm flashing on the screen if you um want to skip all of that. But I mean, it I do go through the whole book. The book actually begins really, really well. It's very beautiful sort of goes over the land even before um, there was property built on it and it sort of expounds out focusing on various parts like this river and um, the sort of hill going down to the river from where eventually a house is built and it goes through the sort of um, development of the land and eventually we come to this family that's living there and they are dog breeders um, the dogs that they breed are unique in that they don't really go for like a particular look but rather like a temperament and even more than that like almost a sort of I mean I, I, I sort of think that they go for like intelligence but it talks a lot in the book about like the looks in the dog's eyes and especially like ingenuity and creativity bravery and stuff like that at one point, you know, he hears about a dog that did this crazy rescue and had never been trained. I think it like pulled someone out from a building or something like that, and and so he grabs that dog and breeds it and adds it into his line to sort of improve the species as overall just good dogs. I guess it's really cool. Um, uh, the the breeder then has like these kids and the kids. Um, there's like two brothers. Um, and one of the brothers goes off, the other brother sort of stays around and has a child. The child is Edgar Sortel. Um, he's born with like weird problems, no one can figure it out for a while, but eventually it's realised that he's mute. There's some really beautiful scenes in there. One that is probably one of my favourite like chapters of all time, and it's just like a page or two. It's written so... Oh, I hear trucks. They're, they're beeping at the kids waiting for the school bus. <laughs> One of the really great scenes is, is when the family dog meets the baby for the first time. Oh, it's, it's, it's so great. It's so great. Let me see if I can even find it here. Okay, so I couldn't find the passage while I was recording, but um, I have it here. This is the chapter um, titled Edgar. And the story of Edgar Sortel. I'll just be reading the first page and a half. This will be his earliest memory. Red light, morning light, high ceiling canted overhead, lazy click of toenails on wood. Between the honey-coloured slats of the crib, a whiskery muzzle slides forward until its cheeks pull back and a row of dainty front teeth bear themselves in a ridiculous grin. The nose quivers, 
the velvet snout dimples. All the house is quiet, be still, stay still. Fine dark muzzle fur, black nose, leather of lace work creases, comma of nostrils flexing with each breath. A breeze shushes up the hill and pillows the curtains inward. The apple tree near the kitchen window caresses the house with a tick, tickety, tick, tick. As slowly as he can, he exhales, feigning sleep, but despite himself, his breath hitches. At once, the muzzle knows he is awake. It snorts, angles right and left, withdraws. Outside the crib, Amundine's forequarters appear. Her head is reared back, her eyes cocked forward. A cherry brindled eye peers back at them, whoosh of her tail. Be still, stay still. The muzzle comes hunting again, tunnels beneath his blanket, below the farmers and pigs and chicks and cows died into that cotton world. His hand rises on fingers and Spider walks across the surprised farmyard residence to challenge the intruder. It becomes a bird hovering before their eyes. Thumb and index fingers squeeze the crinkled black nose. The pink of her tongue darts out, but the bird flies away before Almondine can lick it. Her tail is swishing harder now. Her body sways, her breath envelops him. He tugs the blackest whisker on her chin and this time her tongue catches the palm of his hand ever so slightly. He pitches to his side, rubs his hand across the blanket, blows a breath in her face. Her ears flick back. She stomps a foot. He blows again and she withdraws, bows and woofs. Low in her chest, quiet and deep, the boom of an uncontainable heartbeat. Hearing it, he forgets and presses his face against the rails to see her, all of her, take her inside him with his eyes and before he can move, she smears his tongue, her, she smears her tongue across his nose and forehead. He claps a hand to his face but it's too late. She's spinning away, biting her tail, dancing in the moated sunlight that spills through the window glass. After that, um, it sort of like goes over the, the child growing up and um, um, Edgar Sortel's uncle, the brother, he, he goes off somewhere and he has a couple of scenes <coughs> which are kind of sneaky, but you don't really see too much. There's also a scene, like a flashback, where he kills his dog, Claude, the uncle, kills his, his own dog because it won't fight another dog. Because he gets drunk and he's like, oh, oh, my dog's tougher than your dog. So then they take the dogs to someone's house and the dog's like, doesn't want to fight this other guy's dog, which is a savage dog, like, locked up in a cage and shit. So he gets, like, real mad and shoots the dog. It's such a brutal scene. Um, and it goes again. She's looking around and so on. So... So, um, turns out Edgar is mute and he can't speak, um, but he grows up and he learns sign language um, so that he can talk to his parents and they work out their own sort of sign language and so on. And he learns to breed dogs and look after dogs and um, eventually he gets his own litter to raise and that's a whole thing. It's so awesome, like I'm pretty biased because I love dogs, but it's sick. Um, eventually like the uncle comes back to the farm. Um, they have like a, um, they have a pretty like bad argument, like drunk and stuff. Um, life goes on, but if after a few weeks, the father is like mysteriously dead in the barn. Well, I think Edgar finds the, the, his father dying in the barn um, and can't do anything. Um, he can't, he, he's like yelling, right? Trying to scream for help, but he's mute. So like nothing's coming out of his mouth and he just watches his dad die. Um, then after the funeral, the uncle Claude like sort of stays around. Um, 
turkeys on my roof. Um, the uncle stays around and helps with the business and, um, and then his mum gets sick and he's sort of doing the extra work and, um, and like shit starts going pretty bad like the dogs get loose at one point and his mum's sick and he can't even talk and he's just a kid doing everything. Um, he's like pre-teen, maybe like a, maybe he's like 13 or 14 or something. Um, oh, maybe he's older, fuck. Maybe I should just look. Is it gonna say somewhere? Probably not. It's not really a summary, everything's just reviews. Oh no, here's a summary. Nah, it doesn't say how old he is. Okay. I might edit that out. <laughs> Claude comes in and he helps. Um, he's like staying nearby off and on, but now he like fully moves into the house to help because she's sick and he and, and the mum's sick and Claude and uh, Edgar can't look after the place by himself, so Uncle Claude moves in. Um, and... Um, Hey, kitty. Um, Edgar wakes up one night hearing the dogs like barking. Goes and checks it out. Um, and he like he he talks to his dad's ghost and shit. Um, and his dad. Well, I don't know if he talks to him, but like he sees his dad's ghosts. Um, you don't know if it's like real, if it's a real ghost, or if it's his imagination or whatever. But like through whatever like sheer luck and, and delusion or whether it's a ghost um, he finds like a syringe um, that's been like sort of discarded in a way that looks like it's been tried to be hidden um, and he's seen, I think he's seen his uncle use the syringe before as well so then, um, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but the mother and the uncle start, like, becoming romantically involved. Um, and this is all, like, you know, maybe this is a year later or possibly even longer. Like, the book goes from, like I said, before there's even people on the property all the way to well, the end of the book. Um they decide they're gonna sell the dogs and um the dog breeding um just as a um quick interrupt i got that wrong they're just selling the litter of dogs that he'd been breeding at the time and edgar this is like real i mean it's very obviously Hamlet in some ways, but Ad Edgar does like a little, like he's showing off the dogs to the buyers, and he does like this, I don't know if you've seen, um, like, obedience workouts where they do it to a theme, like they might be military and the dog will be marching, and then the dog will like, do flips and shit when there's guns going off or explosions, I don't know. But he does a, he does like a routine with the dogs, where the dog brings over like a syringe and then he like poisons another dog and the other dog like dies and shit to see how like his um um uncle would react and his uncle like sort of storms off um during it or at the end and then um and then his mum gets annoyed because she's like w what are you doing you're doing weird shit in front of the buyers Edgar um um gets like aggressive with his mum, not aggressive but they're both like yelling and he's just a kid still so it's not like he's physically hurting or anything but he's getting up in a grill so like um, so then he's arguing with his mum and like he thinks he sees a figure like coming out um, from like amongst the hay and sort of uh, he pushes pushes this figure he thinks it's his uncle like coming out to to do a, a syringe murder I guess and he um pushes pushes the figure 
but it's it's this other character who I haven't actually mentioned yet, but it's it's the the vet, the family vet. Uh, he's a nice guy, this old like Doctor Pump pup in there or something. He um Edgar's like pushed him now, and he's fallen off like the hayloft or some shit, and and he dies. He he falls over. Um, and, and he dies, and so Edgar's now killed him, and so Edgar's like, fuck, and his mum's like, just get out of here, you know, just go away for now, like, um, I think she says, like, um, like, I'll stand with a light at the, at the barn when you can come back or something, so he runs off, and, and he's, he's had this litter of pups that have been growing up with him that he was selling off, these were the dogs that, that were just about to be sold, and, um, um, he tries to convince them to come. Three of them choose to come. Not all of them do. Fair enough. It's really like, oh man, the way he talks about dogs in this book is so well done. Like it's very accurate, I think. Um, and the way that the family, especially Edgar, treat dogs, it's just so good. It's so yeah. So three of the dogs choose to come with him. Um, not all of them do. And he goes off into the woods, and he like. Um, He's he's wandering through the woods for quite a while, and he ends up um, like having to break into cabins and like steal food, and he um, and he wants to go up to Canada, um, but one of his dogs gets hurt, so then he has to um, go go to a house where um, he'd like seen some shit that that. Um, where he'd robbed it, he'd robbed the house earlier, and he'd seen some stuff he could use for the dog. So he goes back and he meets the owner, who is actually like this pretty nice guy, like pretty understanding. Doesn't like sort of force much out of Edgar, who's clearly like in a weird position, um, and just sort of like helps him, lets him stay until the dog is is healed, um, which takes quite a while. And then he's like, uh, and then. He says he'll take him up to Canada, um, and um, so they're heading up to Canada, um, and like a tornado just rips through, and they have to stop. And he's just like, oh, like this is. And he takes it as a sort of as a message. So he, um, so so he decides to to try and return home. And two of the dogs actually choose to stay with this guy. Um, that he'd been staying with while while the other while the dogs were healing. Um, then um, Edgar sort of sneaks back and he's sneaking around town. He finds out his old dog, like the original dog Almondine, um, has has died. Um, he leaves a note for his mum, but then the uncle finds the note and tells the cops and then tells the son of the vet, um, who's suspicious that like Edgar killed killed the vet so Claude is like taking some poison the uncle he's moving some poison into the barn in case something happens he wants to have it like on hand and Edgar like sees him doing it and um and and so he like contacts his mum secretly and he's like just give me one night in the barn and I can find the poison um, and at the same time, the uncle and the son of the vet are like making a trap so that they can question Edgar. Um, and so Edgar's in the barn and, and the son of the vet actually finds him and tries to kidnap him using like a rag soaked in like in ether. Um, and Edgar manages to like throw like quick lime into the guy's eyes. It's like a a fairly corrosive mineral that you use um, for certain things on, on farms. <coughs> um, and again, the son of the vet's now blind, he's like running around and he, and he like um, smashes like this bottle, uh, this ether rag into a lamp and like the, the barn catches on fire. And so Edgar um, realizes that this barn which isn't just a barn, but it's like the office of the breeding thing, and it goes into quite a lot of detail about how this barn looks. But it has, 
you know, an upstairs, a downstairs, it has multiple bathrooms, and a very important part of it is all the files and the meticulous, meticulous notes that go back, like, all the way to his grandfather for, like, all these different dogs, all the different breeds, and who's got them and where they are, because sometimes they'll go get that dog and check up on them, because they don't just let their dogs go off to whoever. They want to make sure the dogs are looked after and so on. Um, and, and there's all these files, all the different dogs, and, and you know, hundreds and hundreds of files. So Edgar's like, shit, this stuff's going to burn. Um, so he starts moving them while the barn's on fire, and his mum... Um, is like running to try and stop him because the whole thing's catching on fire and the blind son of the vet now like grabs the mother he's like no you can't stop him and um, Claude has actually like put the poison in the papers in the files so Claude knows like Edgar's going to come across him so he's like I'll help you with the files and he goes in and so now he's like oh, I'll, I'll pretend he's I'm, I'm helping you with the files and um um, when Edgar's like turned, he, he stabs Edgar with the syringe in the burning, in the burning barn. He stabs him and, um, poisons him. And, and the uncle's sort of just waiting there because he doesn't want, um, Edgar to sort of survive. So he's waiting for him to, um, for the poison to work. And he tries to, um, leave. And he like gets caught up in the smoke and he's not able to get out and he dies and Edgar dies in the barn which burns down and the dogs um, run off into the woods and that's that's the end of the book it's um, it's bloody great um, I know Oprah Winfrey recommended it oh, what am I on? Uh, mm. Oprah Winfrey recommended it. I recommend it. I know I've totally spoiled it, but to be honest, like that story, I mean, it's it's, it's really good. Um, but it's not the only really good thing about the book. Like the writing is just succulent. It's so nice. It's so it's so great. It um, it's very pretty. It it's calming I found like uh, you can you can just chill on this book even though the end like I realize it gets a bit wild but even though the end does get quite wild it's only the end which is like that and it's 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 beautiful I found it really great well guys Sun's really ruining the rest of most of this video, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed. I might review something else next time. What would you guys prefer I review? Um, 120 Days of Sodom or The Godfather? Alright, let me know. Like and subscribe. This is when the dog's like learning that the mother's pregnant. Eventually she understood the house was keeping a secret from her. All that winter and all through the spring, Almondine had known something was going to happen, but no matter where she looked, she couldn't find it. Sometimes when she entered a room, there was a feeling that the thing was going to happen and it had just been there and she would stop and pant and peer around while the feeling seeped away as mysteriously as it had arrived. Weeks might pass without a sign and then a night would come when, lying nose to tail beneath the window in the kitchen corner, listening to the murmur of conversation and the slosh and clink of dishes being washed, she felt it in the house again. She whisked her tail across the baseboards in long pensive strokes and silently collected her feet beneath her and waited. When half an hour passed and nothing appeared, she groaned and sighed and rolled on her back and waited to see if it was somewhere in her sleep.